Hello, welcome to Jade Kind Gaming. My name is Adam. Here with another Dwarven Forge unboxing, um, a smattering of add-ons for the Wildlands Kickstarter, various wilderness terrain, uh, including the enchanted pool, some conifer trees, small forest floors, the Spore Claw Deluxe. Fogger pack, which includes the actual DF floor fogger, so we're gonna take a look at that, and then also the uh, couple bits of surface layer scenery, um, a texture mat, and some river terrain trays, and that's that's where we'll begin by laying down a surface. So we got whatever a texture mat for the mountain lake, 24 by 24 with grid. Grid looks. Suitably subtle. Uh, packed just like. The swamp one was before it. Rolled up. On a tube that's much too small. Um, live on the back. Very super thin. Just sort of two foot by two foot mat. Uh, I have a couple pieces from the swamp set that I got before, just to kind of show some things, how the edges work. Because obviously this is swamp banks, but you can use it with the mountain as well. But yeah, so of course, along with that, we also have the. Raging River Train Tray 2 Pack. Which is. stuff that I've not seen. Because this should have a layer that adds this texture on top of them uh, as an option. Bubble in there. Let me get a look at how pretty this seems to be. So, take a look at this or these. In a moment, first, uh, we get just our normal terrain trays, uh, metal, so the magnets stick. Uh, we have this river here, and the just sort of open mountain lake on a one foot by one foot border there, which actually blends in better on the camera than it does in person. It's it's clearly a lighter, less uh, vibrant color in person. Um, the other one has our spill out for whether it's a waterfall if you have those. I don't yet. Hope to get them. Um, or even just the end of a river as it meets into the lake. Um, and then this matches the terrain tray perfectly and is less vibrant than the actual mat. And then here we have a curving uh, over there. So, I don't want to know. So this is a layer that is just a very thin plastic that has this texture on it. Um, which when added over this makes it just as shiny as the basic uh, whatever the texture mat, but it's still like the the coloration is not the same. The they're not a perfect match. Let's just say that. Um, and you can kind of tell on the camera that this one is lighter than this one, but yeah. So it's definitely that. But it will sort of just add that sheen to it. I don't know how often I would actually use these mats compared to just using this 
Um, no, I'm not sure what that. Yeah, so we have some terrain trays. Which of course, I can lay out there to help flatten down the edges. Uh, now, I'm going to move on to this little pack here. Let's zoom in a bit. Small forest floors. This is one I actually got a while ago, but I didn't have enough to feel like making a video with it. This is just a bunch of little bitty floors. So, again, bringing in just a piece that I already have from the Explorers the Swamp set. The idea is we get four of this piece. So they can fit in places as needed. Yet Six this piece. And four of this. So one piece. So I mean I could obviously do a few of those. There we go. Um we have managed to fill in the space here because the normal spaces on the wilderness are three by three. So we have a two by two, a one by two, and a one by one. So you can fill in awkward spaces if you ever want to combine, say, um, like houses, which are built on a four by four system from the city, bu city builder line or, um, dungeon stuff which is built on a 2x2 two two system any of those you want to combine into the 3x3 three three system you now have pieces to fill in the awkward edges around it to, to help it combine different sizes so having some assortment of these seemed uh, useful to help make the sets work with other sets now this one I've had for a bit I need to do a video on and it's been it's been tempting because like doing a video just on some trees didn't seem like much, but I've been wanting to get into them because some variety on the trees, the conifers. Uh, so we get two smaller ones. get a mini in for scale and of course I have the banks that I have because they have built-in tree stumps so we can figure out what it really looks like there we have many there underneath this tree um, yeah so you have Branches going up into the tree. It is hollow up there. Which, I mean, you could pull some shenanigans with. <laughs> um, but yeah, so. Conifers. Evergreens. And really just nice to be able to have a bit of variety in the tiny kinds of trees. Like we haven't had. It's also one big one. So, again, the other bank I have is the one with the large stump. So, standing below it, easy enough. Hiding up in it, not too difficult. Although, if you're going to actually leave a mini up there, you may want to secure it with something. But yeah, there is... Actually, be careful. 
Well, the base might go in there and it would be hard to get out. Yeah, no, you can totally put it up in there. <laughs> this one has lots of room to hide a mini inside. But yeah, so I guess comparing the two in size. Yeah. Very large conifer tree. Now we move on to the enchanted pool. So, query within the wilderness environment. Yeah. Uh, I'm just it all out there. So let's see here. We'll start with a magnetic boulder. It's a magnet on the bottom. It will stick to the terrain tray. And then it has a metal plate right here on this flat side so that, say, this piece here will stick to it. Or whatever else you have that you need to stick to something. Yeah, you have a also magnetic boulder. A couple of this little plant here. I guess the need for scale helps. As some of these are quite large plants. And a couple of these as well. These are plants that uh, I got in the uh, swamp, but like one or two of. So now I have a few more. Then we have, I believe this is the shimmer frond, which I did not get. Uh, that I remember. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> there was a lot in that set. But this little very large very beautiful plant perhaps fey origin. It's got some bright colored you know not just the plant like petals but like the leaves and such as well. This could be some sort of vine that latches out for someone, um, but it's on a base that matches with just normal, normal wilderness terrain. So it's a very fantasiful plant growing out of a normal environment. And of course, within here we also have this piece, the uh, enchanted pool itself, which looks very interesting from the bottom because it is clear. And that'll be important in another video um, because you can see through the pool you can also kind of see through some of the cracks here. Um, perhaps if there was some sort of light that might come up through it it, it would be very pretty. <laughs> um, but otherwise there are spaces here kind of marked out on the actual top that go around a circle. Um, it's a little sort of raised platform stone with a pool in the center of it, some moss and pretty plants growing around the outside, and we'll see where this can sit in the next box. As we have finally made it to the Spore Claw Deluxe Fogger Pack. That is separate, okay. Oh, uh, shoot, just fine. So we will look at the items without fantasible stuff first. We have this platform, which on the bottom, which is heavy, uh, has a sort of square cutout as well as a circle cutout. Again, circle cut out we will see in the video with the translucent bits. For example, this right here, this top of it, this weird stone shape that pops out, um, it is translucent. So you can see through that. Light would look beautiful coming through that as well, I'm sure. Um, otherwise, we have this sort of ridge. This is the you know, six by six. So again, if you need to make it where it fits within like a city, you can use pieces like this to 
help make it uh, a different size as needed. You know, bulk it out to where you're able to fit it in. Um, but we have a flat side here with some pegs. So like if you need like a bridge to go off of it, uh, this edge kind of goes flat, but not quite enough that if you need to corner it up to something you could, but it doesn't look so unnatural if not. Um, and other sides just go down to the green grass below. Uh, we have one, two, three pole accessory holes. I don't see one on this side. I don't think there's one. <laughs> but sometimes they hide them pretty well. Um, but yeah, so this thing here. And of course, this piece that we got last time sits very well right there to, uh, to make it a further raised platform up to the pool. So there's another option for how to use it. Uh, this can also be a great base for the next next piece here uh, which has a magnet if you just want to put it on a terrain tray um, but it has this hole up through here which we'll get to in another box um, definitely has a bit of a glossy look to it this giant plant um, things growing all around it. Obviously it has uh, three holes that we'll see uses for. Um, but you can just use it as this. And it, of course, for obvious, for, for soon to be obvious reasons, fits well on top of this base as well. It kind of looks like, yeah, all around there, it's growing up around stone. But it has enough edges that look natural that if you wanted to put it right on grass you could. So what about this? DF floor fogger. This is, this is a piece that I've been looking forward to for a while. Instructions! It includes instructions. It includes batteries. Okay that's nice because I actually had batteries off to the side because I did not expect that since it used uh, um, Before using your fogger, please follow basic instructions included. Um, so, working batteries or connected to a USB power source. Uh, if you are using batteries, they will last much longer in interval mode, about 10 hours, than continuous mode, about 2 hours. Um, when convenient, use USB power. I run 2 hour sessions, so I'm okay with that. Um, blank on this side, so instructions all here. Um, DF Floor Fogger is a compact special effects device designed to add atmosphere and drama to your terrain by creating a stream of ionized water vapor. Only use distilled non-carbonated water. Um, won't <laughs> Tap water or other liquids won't function as well and can damage your fogger. Uh, I have bottled water for right now. But in general, I will be buying distilled water because, yeah, I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Um, diagram of instructions, how to operate, whatever. <laughs> Warning on condensation, etc. Okay. So. So to get the batteries in, there are screws. So I took out the screws and then I actually had to pry something into one of those spots to get it to actually open. Use the batteries that came with. Let's see our little electronics over here. All in the separate compartment underneath so that ideally stays dry. I'm just gonna operate it without the screws. Oh, I just 
noticed. Dwarven Forge. <laughs> this is a plug. We will plug up that hole so that it won't leak. However, the way this thing is designed is that if, say, something on top of it builds up and causes condensation to drip back down, it is designed to have this reservoir around here where it will collect and go back in to help refill it as you go. like how that just went in when I tried to fill it a little too quickly. Okay. Who would have thought water would get involved with this device that uses water? Fortunately, I am all on the texture matter anyways. I am going to go ahead and put the plug in just to be safe. So this will come up into here and this hole with that. Oh, it doesn't quite set right that way. There we go. This way sits correctly. So that's what we want. There should be a switch on here. Over to the side here, next to the USB port. So it's currently an off. Oh, you can see it going. So here is continuous. That is so cool. So supposedly, um, per the instructions here, that's gonna last um, 90 minutes on continuous mode, about two hour battery life, but about 90 minutes of water if full. Um, which in theory, you know, it would, um, you know, if I'm running a two hour session, you know, it's not gonna have to be on the whole time. They're gonna have to either get to it or they'll finish the encounter and move on. But that's just, wow. Um, then we can also find that switch and go the other way. bit delicate getting it up in here. If you have it on this way, you're going to end up with three seconds of fog and then ten seconds of no fog. And three seconds of fog. So this should make it where um, batteries last about ten hours, so much longer, and uh, about 120 minutes of time for water, which is, you know, two hours, how long my sessions are, perfect for me. Uh, and of course, <clears throat> just seeing a mini beside it, because this thing is, of course, massive. So this, this is a fun toy for me. This, this one, this is cool. This is one I've looked forward to for a bit now. Um, cause it's, it's one of the ones that it's a new piece of technology. Um, there aren't a whole lot of things that in Dwarven Forge that it's used for yet. There's a few. And they've already shown what one of the next one's going to be. 
Um, definitely a little effort in getting it on and then put up into the the spot where it goes. But um, but yeah. So there's there's a few things that it does already, and they they they're saying yeah there will be more. Um, it's now a piece of tech that they can support with their um, future developments. And that's one of the things that I love about Dwarven Forge is how much they support and continue to expand upon what what they can do with their the pieces that they've already made. Making stuff where you've already bought it, now let's give you stuff to do more with it. So, having a little mini fog machine is fun for me. Um, plus all the cool other wildland stuff. The the trees are exciting. The pool is exciting. Even the just having the small stuff to be able to put, um, like a house, in line with, like wilderness is cool for me because previously I have had to, uh, just sort of have it where my builds at the edges are not equal, like where they just kind of go on even at the different sides in order to do that. Um, so now I can properly have a house in the middle of wilderness. Um, but yeah, so I will link down to Dwarven Forge's website below where you can check some of this stuff out. At time of filming, they have started like putting all this stuff on there as coming early summer. So it's not yet for sale, um, but by the time I get this edited, maybe it will be, or if not, pretty soon so we're, we're getting there as they're finishing up delivering everything so it's exciting for me too because there's stuff that i didn't get during the kickstarter that i'm looking forward to <laughs> um but yeah so that was the df floor fogger and other foresty wilderness uh stuff from the wildlands kickstarter like comment subscribe and thank you for watching bye